Alright, hello gamers and welcome back to part 2 of my Midwest Gaming Classic 2016 uh, video series. If you missed part 1, it was kind of all about the trip down and the show itself. Please check that one out, I will leave a link in the description below. But part 2 here is just going to be a more traditional pickup video, um, showing you off everything that I did pick up during the event. Uh, so to start things off, before I even went into the vendor hall, I'd already had some trades lined up with friends and um, other YouTubers. And first up, my buddy Justin, who came down with me, had picked some games up from uh, a coworker a while back, I mean a few months ago, and we knew we were going to be meeting up for MGC, so we just hung on to him for me. I paid $10 for all of this, um, and there were about another six games that I don't have in here that I just traded off during the rest of the event. Um, but so getting right into this stack, it's all GameCube, Xbox, and PlayStation 2 stuff. So right off the bat, we've got Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. I'm a big Tony Hawk fan. I do really like 3. Uh, this was the last one in the series that really piqued my interest, though, and then I just kind of fell off after that. One more GameCube game here, and uh, one that I couldn't believe has gone up in value as much as it has, so I was happy to get this in the bundle. That's Fantasy Star Online Episode 1 and 2. And I've never played one of these Fantasy Star Online games, not even on the Dreamcast. So this will be my first uh, go-around with it, and I'm really happy to have this one in the collection. It's in great shape, too. Moving on to Xbox, we've got Phantom Dust, which is an Xbox exclusive, and one that I don't come across very often. So it's really cool to pick this one up. It looks like an interesting game. Um, gonna have to pop this one in and check it out. I haven't done that yet. Uh, fighting game here, Dead or Alive 3. And then the rest will be all PlayStation 2. Um, got a copy of Shinobi. And I already have this game, but I believe my copy is pretty scratched up. So I'm looking to do an upgrade with that one. Uh, same with this one, actually. And that's Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Probably one of my favorite Grand Theft Auto games. Um, at least for the era that it came out, came out in. I think, you know, Grand Theft Auto V, obviously, is amazing. But there was so much content in this game. Endless hours of fun. Um, some shooters here. Red Faction. And I did play Red Faction back in the day. It's been so long since I played a Red Faction game, though. I'm looking forward to trying it out and see if it's held up. I do remember liking it when it was originally out. And then to go along with that, I got Red Faction 2. Um, another one that I may have, I'll have to check. Um, it's Onimusha 2. I think if I do have this one, it's pretty beat up and doesn't have a manual. So that's probably going to be an upgrade for me. And the last one is another cool one, um, and one that I don't come across that often. And that is Ghost in the Shell for the PlayStation 2. So yeah, everything there, um, 10 bucks plus the six or seven other games that I ended up trading off over the weekend. So it was a hell of a deal. It was nice of him to grab those for me. Um, and then the next trade I actually did with another YouTuber, Business17. Um, in the off chance that you don't know who he is already or have never seen his channel, which I'm sure you have if you're watching my channel, I will leave a link in the description below. Um, he posted a video prior to MGC with some pickups and NES um, haul, and he had a couple of these Advantage controllers, and I almost whipped myself with that, and he wanted to get rid of them, and I said, you know, I'm going to be down there, I would take them off of you, and uh, you know, we worked on a trade, and what I actually want to do with these, I've got a few Advantage controllers already. But I want to take these two and I want to build like a little arcade cabinet with a multi-cart um, NES game and uh, set that up as like a mini arcade for my kids. That's the plan. We'll see if it happens. Um, I need the time and the ambition to get that started, but I think that would be really cool. And then just have those integrated as the um, joysticks for the arcade. And then on top of that, he had already picked up some, or he brought along some doubles um, in addition to that stuff. So uh, I got to dig into that and I picked out a couple NES games. Um, Load Runner, which I did not have, and Pac-Man. Um, so yeah, another one I didn't have, good to have in the collection. Um, and I traded him a few of the doubles I had there. So, you know, thanks again for the trade, appreciate it. And I will put those Advantage controllers to good use, hopefully. Um, and then the last trade before we get into the stuff I actually picked up from the show uh, was with my buddy Andy, a video game experiment here on YouTube again. If you don't know who he is, I'll leave a link in the description below. Check out that channel as well, if you'd like. I recommend it. Um, he had some stuff that he picked up, NES-wise, and um, 
I got to look through it and I, made, I picked all the ones that I needed for my collection. Um, and then also a Turbo Graphics game, which I'll show off here. It's Victory Run. Um, now, I already have Victory Run, but he'd gotten a copy in with the case manual, and I wanted that. So basically, I just got the case manual. It's actually my game that I threw in here, and I just gave him the extra cue card because I didn't need it. And then I got a stack of NES games from him here. Uh, the Mutant Virus, which I had never seen or heard of before. Played a little bit of it. It doesn't appear to be the best game, but I'll give it some more time. We'll see. Um, Prince of Persia. Classic Prince of Persia. It's fun. Uh, strategy game here. Desert Commander. Um, another tactical strategy type game. Um, Shingen the Ruler. Played a little bit of that. I think it's going to be more complicated and, and tedious than I want to put time into. Um, Tag Team Wrestling from Data Yeast. Daydreamin' Davey. Played a little bit of this too. Uh, not particularly great, I, I'll admit. Um, Spider-Man, The Return of the Sinister Six. LJN game. Um, I did play through the first couple stages. You know, it's it's passable. I'm not going to complain about it. It's cool to have in the collection. I don't come across that one very often. And then a fun game here, uh, Flintstones, The Rescue of Dino and Hoppy. Uh, so not the uber expensive um, version of the Flintstones, but it's still a fun game nonetheless. So thanks, Andy, for um, bringing those down. I appreciate that. And that is all for the trades. Now for stuff I actually picked up at the show. Okay, so pickups from the vendor hall at MGC. Now the first thing I picked up right off the bat, they we were selling up for 125 bucks. I've been wanting to buy one for a while. I got the Retron 5. Um, and I did use it a little bit over the weekend to test and play some of the games. And I have to say, it's about what I expected. Uh, the build quality is a little bit lacking. I have a Retron 3 and the NES cart slot on that one broke within the first couple of months. Um, so I didn't expect too much of the Retron 5. Uh, you know, the, the problem with these is it's really convenient, but it doesn't work with every game, which is frustrating. Um, and also, about 10 minutes into using this, I bought a Color Dreams game. Um, at the vendor hall the first day and I put it in and it actually you know the the, the Connectors and the retrons are kind of notorious for being uber tight and it's hard to get the uh, games in and out at times It feels like you might actually break the system or the, your game um, And it actually did break the game. It broke the cartridge. Uh, I broke the side out into a couple pieces um, which really pissed me off and I spent the next like 20 minutes trying to fish the pieces of the cartridge out of the system and it bent up a lot of the pins on my NES slot on this thing. Miraculously it still works after that um, but not a great first impression so I've been using it I mean as a convenience piece it's nice but I don't expect that it's gonna last real long after my initial experience and I have friends who have the Retron 5 and no one's had that issue so I'm probably just lucky or stupid I guess and had that happen to me but Anyway, moving on, that was the first thing I bought, and then, I kind of mentioned before, I think prices were a little higher. Prices at conventions like that are going to be higher. Obviously, the market's there, people are traveling all over to come and sell those games um, to that audience. So you're never really going to get a steal. I mean, that's not what these are about. Um, so I kind of just looked for things that were inexpensive that I didn't have, or maybe targeted different systems than I normally would. Usually at conventions like this, I'm out to get the things I won't find anywhere else. Um, usually, lately, it's been Jaguar games and Turbo Graphics. That was no exception again here, except I didn't have luck with either of those systems. But I did have luck finding games cheaply for another system that I picked up recently, and that is the Master System. And I got a nice stack of games. I couldn't tell you what I paid for most of these. I know it was about two or three dollars a piece um, on average for these. And most of them came from Saturday or Sunday when things were getting cleared out, and I would just find a stack of games, hold it up and um, shoot him an offer and I'd get a bundle of four or five games at a time. But anyway, let's get right into it. So first off, I got Global Defense. Next up is Pro Wrestling. Shanghai. Afterburner. And I've never been a huge fan of Afterburner. I don't like the game that much, but that for an 8-bit port, that's a solid port. Uh, Maze Hunter 3D. Enduro Racer, fun game, and Choplifter. So I got all those loose cartridges, and then I did get 
a few complete ones here. Uh, first one is Gangster Town, which uses the light gun. Um, and one that I actually, this was on my list, Double Dragon for the Master System. I picked up Double Dragon on the NES recently and I really liked it. I mean, I played it as a kid, but the fact that there's no two player option kind of bothers me. So I made it a mission to pick this one up. I paid $15, which is maybe a few dollars too high, but it's in excellent condition. Um, manuals in there, the cartridge is spotless. And uh, I've been playing this one quite a bit actually, really happy to have this. And the rest of these again were all just a buck or two each, probably two, three dollars I think. Um, Thunderblade, Zaxxon 3D, it says you can't play that without the 3D glasses, but that's not true, you can totally play it. It would probably be easier with the 3D glasses, I'll give them that. And then I ended up picking up another complete copy of Afterburner, um, it just happened that the seller had one and I threw it in with the bundle. Um, so I'll have an extra copy that'll probably go on the giveaway. Um, if you haven't entered that, you can check out the giveaway video for the 200 subscriber contest I'm doing and enter that for a chance to win along with some other stuff. Um, and then for a dollar each, this is kind of the bargain bin finds. You got a bunch of Game Boy and Game Boy Advance stuff. Wario Land 4. Spyro 2. Hot Wheels Velocity X. Top Gear Rally. And I bought this just because they don't have one of these like video cartridges for the Game Boy Advance, so I wanted to check it out. And that is uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Things change. Um, it does not look good on the Retron, I'll give it that. Blown up and distorted, it looks terrible. But it's kind of cool that they got video on a cartridge like that anyway. Um, I picked up Tennis. For the original Game Boy, and then a really beat up copy of R Type. So some other bargain bin stuff, or maybe the last, last one here. For a dollar, I picked up Winter, um, Winter X Games Snowboarding, 2002. Uh, I actually kind of like these games. They kind of came out in the window when the Cool Border series was kind of dead, and I don't know that Amps had come out just yet. So this filled the gap pretty nicely. Haven't played it in a long time though. I'm gonna have to check that out and see if it's any good. I did like them back in the day. Uh, picked up a cheap Turbo Graphics game here that is TV Sports Hockey. I think I paid five for that. Um, this one I got the seller to come way down on. I think I paid five dollars, which is half of what they were asking. Is right at the end of the event on Sunday. That's Shikan. And um, if you guys watch Game Sack, they reference this one a lot. So I thought I would pick it up. It looked interesting. And then these were a dollar or two each. Um, a copy of Blades of Steel for the NES, one of my favorite games sports games even, um, on the NES. And this is going to go in the giveaway also. The original Top Gun, and <clears throat> I finally got this one. I always end up buying Second Mission. Um, and I always think that Top Gun Second Mission is the one that I'm missing, and it turns out it's it's not. It's the original Top Gun. So I finally have it. Check that off my list. And then Days of Thunder, which I'd played once as a kid, and remember, I remember vividly this game sucking, and um, it hasn't gotten any better. So, <clears throat> at least my memory was clear. And then being I have the Retron 5 now, I thought, you know, why not pick up some more Famicom games? They're pretty inexpensive at shows, and uh, it'd be kind of fun to try some of these. So I picked up this one. I don't know the name of it at all. It's like a, it's the second one. I can make, make out the two, and it's kind of this action platformer um, game. I believe CGR Undertow did an, a review on this a few years back. Um, you can't look it up because I don't know the name of it. If somebody does, comment below. But it's fun. I like that one. And got a bunch of box games again. End of the show Sunday. I think I got these for 20 bucks, like the whole stack. Um, Argus shooting game. Uh, Wario's Woods. I have no clue, but I liked the box art, so I picked it up. This is Championship Bowling, uh, which I really like the cover art in this too. And then this one is actually brand new, factory sealed. Um, the, the game inside is still in its plastic baggie and it's sealed up. And that's Twin Eagle, which is a fun game. I do have it on the NES also. So with the boxes, I thought that was a good price to pick all that up. And then next up, oh, before I knock over this stack, we'll go through the NES stuff that I picked up, or the majority of it. Um, Quattro Arcade, this was the last Quattro game that I needed, and um, 
I wanted to grab that up. And along with that, I also picked up um, Raid 2020. And this is the Color Dream game that I was talking about that broke the side of the cartridge. Thanks, Retron. I think I paid 20 for those together. I bought them in a set. And then this stack I bought the last day. This seller was like clearing out their lower end, well, and all their NES stuff. So I just kind of bottom fed and bought things I didn't have. I got all of this for 25. Um, the Adventures of Tom Sawyer. King's Knight, which is actually a really fun game. I'd never played it. It's a shooter, kind of a forced scrolling shooter. Interesting. I, I had a good time with it the little bit I played. Um, Demon Sword, which reminds me a lot of Legend of Cage or Kage, however you want to pronounce it. I like Cage. Uh, which I believe is also another Taito game on the NES. So I don't know if this is a sequel. Um, it's definitely more fleshed out, but it's really fun. I recommend that one. Terminator 2, which I realized I was thinking I had already bought Terminator, but I would bought Terminator 2 a couple months back. So my mistake again for not cataloging and updating my collection. So that one will probably end up in the trade, um, in the trade or in the giveaway. We'll see. Uh, high speed pinball game. Kind of a fun one, actually. And then last up is Dr. Chaos. And I do have one more NES game, and this is actually a homebrew, and it's Haunted Halloween 85. You may have seen some other YouTubers talking about it. I actually ran into um, D4 Army, he goes by here on YouTube, and he had told me he picked this one up, and I, I didn't even realize this was being sold at the expo. And I finally found the vendor that was selling it the last day. They were kind of off in the corner, so I I'd missed them when I was looking for it earlier. For a homebrew, this is actually really fun. The gameplay is just kind of average, but they put a lot of work into the story, uh, which is kind of unusual. And um, I'd recommend picking it up. It's it's a lot of fun. 40 bucks, and I got the I opted for the cool lime green cartridge. Uh, they do have the standard gray, and they had a box and manual version for 60, but I passed on that. Um, I actually picked up one Wonder Swan game, and this is Anchor Field. And I think the seller was asking like eight bucks for this, and I asked if it was playable if I didn't know Japanese, and he said no, it's a strategy game. And um, then he offered to sell it to me for five. I think I bundled a couple, a couple of those other uh, Master System games with it and got it all for ten. Uh, but I actually did figure out the gameplay to some extent, not knowing, um, you know, what's going on in the text. And it's not a bad game. And now I actually uh, have doubled my Wonder Swan collection, um, which is great. And then for five bucks, this was a factory sealed copy of Desert Strike. I opened it up because I wanted to play it at the event. I played it on my Retron in the hotel room. Great game. Love it. One of my favorites from a kid. I rented this all the time. And um, yeah, it's good to finally have a copy. And then this stack of games here. So I mentioned it in part one, but Bad Graphics Gamers, and if you've not heard of them, they're here on YouTube. Um, they have a great channel. Really nice guys, Jay and Buzzy. Um, they had a booth and they were selling games. At the event, I spoke with them off and on um, throughout the event. Again, really nice guys. I ended up buying this stack of games off of them. I think I paid it's 70 bucks um, overall is what I ended up paying. Um, and now the majority of that was for one game, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so I got three Turbo Graphics games. Don't get too excited because they're all sports games, but ones I didn't have. Taking it to the hoop, basketball game obviously. Uh, World Court Tennis. And World Court Tennis is interesting in that it's a tennis game, but then there's also also this quest mode, which throws you into a straight-up top-down RPG where you adventure through villages and stuff, and the random encounters are tennis matches, which is just bonkers and really entertaining. I'm having a blast with this one, actually. And Super Volleyball, which is um, kind of an odd volleyball game. It plays from a much different perspective than what you're used to. You don't see the, the court down. You just kind of see the players in um, a field across the screen instead of having any depth to the actual volleyball court it's just markers essentially it's, it's a strange game um, and this one actually just ended up getting tossed in with everything else and that's which I appreciate the freebies always good and that's uh, trick shooting and then again so this is the one that I said was um, the majority of the 70 bucks I spent and that was Batman the return of Joker and this is kind of a bummer because I got this home. This is the game I spent the most on, um, NES-wise anyway. And I put it in, does not work. I've cleaned it, does not work. Um, so it really sucks, it's kind of a bummer. Now, obviously, nothing against those guys for selling it. it it's not, it doesn't make business sense to sell games that don't work. I'm sure it was, they've tested it and it did work. And who knows, maybe 
on the trip up for them or the nine hours I drove home something happened and the car went bad but it's disappointing to say the least because that was the one game that I was really looking forward to playing um, but again you know that stuff kind of happens I mean this is only the second time I think I've had that happen with an NES cart so I've been lucky but disappointing to say the least and then I got Popeye one of the black box game black box games I didn't have yet fun game I actually Played this on my Atari 2600 a lot as a kid. I liked the game. This is a much, much better version of that. And then the last one is a strategy game. Nobunaga's Ambition. I think I'm saying that right. I Probably not. But it's um, it's not a game I'm probably going to get super into. But I don't come across it that often. So it was really cool to pick that up. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, not a bad sack of games from those guys. Um, and I again, really nice guys. I highly recommend checking out their YouTube channel if you have not already. And then the last stack of games here, I mentioned in part one, we, we came across a pile of games on Sunday afternoon, probably about 2, 3 o'clock, maybe a little bit, probably later than that actually. And there's just a big table of games thrown all over them, big sign that said free. So we jumped in and scooped up pretty much everything between the three of us that went down there. Um, now the majority of it you would expect to be sports, which it was. So here are the... Uh, sports games most of it Genesis all of it for the most part and um, nothing special there I'm not gonna bore you guys with going through all of those sports games but then there were some not so crappy games in there or at least not sports games and we will go through those so for the Genesis Pac-Man 2 and Frogger now both of those are duplicates for me so those will go in the giveaway also for the PlayStation 2, Dance Dance Revolution Extreme 2, Guitar Hero 3, Legends of Rock, Need for Speed Carbon, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4, on the Xbox we've got Godfather the Game, and then this last one, no cover art or manual, but for the Xbox MX Unleashed. Um, so yeah, that's a hell of a stack of games that I got for free. You can't, can't beat that. Nice way to cap off the event. And that does cap off the video um, as far as games go. I do have one last thing that I will show you because it's probably weirdly my favorite thing that I picked up at the event. All right, so this is the last little pickup that I was... Referring to, <clears throat> I got this sweet wall switch um, from the event that's actually like a little mini arcade so I can power <clears throat> light on and off and it's got this awesome marquee that lights up and buttons <coughs> with sweet sound effects. I mean, how cool is that? If you've made it through this far, guys, um, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a lot to go through. Um, again, I didn't get any amazing titles because the high-end stuff was going for high-end prices. So I found uh, games that I could get on the cheap to pad out my collection, and I had a great time doing it. MGC is always fun. If you can ever get out there and you're in the Milwaukee area, I can't recommend um, I can't recommend it enough. It's one of my favorite expos, and um, I can't wait to go back next year. So as always, guys, thanks for watching.